So, uh, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I do a lot of my reviews from sample bottles, like these guys. Um, in an ideal perfect world, I would get samples of two ounces, 50 milliliters, something like that. And I would be able to do half of them in a previous session, uh, a notes taking session, so I could kind of prep for the video. And I would uh, use the other half to make the video, right? Make a final decision. Um, it doesn't always work, that, work out that way. In particular, sometimes I get samples that are much smaller. Uh, these are my one ounce and smaller sample bottles that have been sitting around. And today, with no notes, live on camera, I'm going to review these uh, for you. Um, I have more kind of in the back over there, but uh, these are the... Oh, Jesus. Wow. Wow. Um, the, <laughs> these are the brandies. So today is the, uh, the brandy small sample bottle video. Um, all right, so what have I got here? Well, one thing I've got is a bunch of samples from PM Spirits. Uh, PM Spirits, importer of a uh, bunch of especially nerdy French stuff. Um, they're also a big, big distributor in New York State. Um, and so they sent me two bottles, a, a Calva and a Cognac to review. And then while I was setting up the video, I realized like almost everything else here, with the exception of Amar, is also PM Spirit. So apparently I'm accidentally shilling for them. Uh, but yeah, these, these two in particular, for disclosure, the, uh, the Calva and the Cognac were actually just sent to me by, by them. They even sent me text sheets. Look at that. Uh, some reviewers uh, can be bought cheaply just by treating them as if they were important or something. And I'm absolutely one of them. Please send me stuff. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Okay, let's get into this. Um, starting off with some fruit brandies, apple brandies in particular. These are from Capriolus. Capriol, I don't know how it's pronounced. But basically, this is a very, very cool new distillery in like basically southwest England. So start in London, drive west maybe 80, 100 miles or so, and you are you are at this distillery. Um, wild fermented, na you know, native yeast fermentation, fruit brandies. Uh, sounds awesome. This is their uh, Thousand Trees Apple Eau de Vie, bottled at 43%. Um, March is a 2019. Um, here we go. The thousand apple things is apparently a reference not to the number of apples that go into every bottle, but just like the number of apple tree varieties that are out there in, you know, Southwest England. Ooh, fun. Um, what I'm getting, first of all, is actually a lot of floral character. lilacs, uh, so there's some lavender in there. There's some like daisies, for, you know, f fresh field flowers. A little potpourri happening. The apple is, is there. There's like a rich, um, it's not even like green apple. It's, it's really just like rich dessert apple. Get out some, some Fuji's, crush them up, you know, shove the the applesauce into your face. That's kind of what I'm getting. Like lots of flowers and lots of kind of rich, sweet dessert apple. Some white pepper as well. Or uh, no, more aromatic than that. Like um, aromatic pepper, like, like pink peppercorn, something like that. What is that? There's some other spices going on. There's some actually some cumin happening, which is really interesting. But really, it's all about the flowers. It's not like in your face aggressive flowers. Like I, I've like I've had Moscato grappas that have really been like just. It just I just feels like I'm being bum rushed by a bunch of by a bunch of flowers. This is much more laid back and subtle. 
Uh, let's see what happens on the pallet. I don't know the price points on these. I, I'm pretty sure they're fairly expensive. It's absolutely delicious. I'm not sure if it's worth a whole lot of money, but it's absolutely delicious. Um, so again, very led by the, the mix of same mix of flowers, the, the daisies, the um, um, what did I say, the, the lilacs, the a the, uh, little bit of lavender, touch of violet. Don't be scared. Even some grassiness, like just some wild, tall grass. Um, but then you've got your apple. You've got, again, lots of dessert apple, some, some Fuji's in there. Um, but you're also starting to get a little bit of bitterness as well. So a little bit of like more bitter apple, um, crab apple almost happening here. Uh, solid mouthfeel, not killer mouthfeel. Um, solid finish, not killer finish. Um, there's some nice minerality happening here it's uh um touch of of like sea salt as well but really it's more about like gravel than it is about you know this it's kind of saline character in my brain i'm comparing this to um the cyril zhang's the zero zero uh it's nowhere near in that in that league for me but it's it's this might actually be easier drinking A little bit of bubble gum happening. Fun. I don't know. This is what I'm kind of on the fence about. Uh, I want to see what it does um, with water. So we're going to give this like half a squirt. Not even that. Like a couple of drops. We'll come back to it. Three, four, five drops of water. Now this is interesting. Um, same stuff. I, I'm guessing the same stuff. From the 2017 vintage, it is bottled at 46% and is aged in chestnut. I'm not sure how long, probably a couple of years, but not too long given the uh, fairly light color. I don't think I've had an, an, uh, a chestnut aged spirit before. So I'm super excited to try this. <laughs> what is happening? Okay. Um, uh wow okay so so take a pine tree and like get out your your knife or like an axe an axe get an axe and like just chop a little bit into the pine tree and break off a chunk of it and you so you get like the fresh kind of moist green pine wood inside and then smell that that is what this smells like wow it's very green it's a very like evergreeny Douglas firs, Christmas trees. But it's fresh as well. There's some juniper. I mean, if you just handed this to me, I would I would think it might be like a like a gin or something, except except for the color. There's some flowers there. There's also some like lemon peel. It's really dominated by the by the just the evergreen tree notes. Interesting, fascinating. Um, let's see what happens. Here we go. Oh. <coughs> Give me, give me a, give me a second. I, I don't know exactly what they were going for here, but if they were going for, you know, something in the realm of aged apple brandy, 
think Calva, think Laird's, that kind of thing. I don't think this works. Like, I'm just not getting a lot of Apple character. I'm, I'm getting, you know, the, the flowers are nice. The flowers are actually more present on the palette than they were on the nose. Yeah, there's really no Apple left to be found here. It's really, like, again, a lot of, like, juniper, Douglas fir, Christmas trees, um, both the both needles, but also like the fresh wood again. Where is the apple? Um, maybe I'm being too hard on this. Like, it's we don't expect malt whiskey to taste like malted barley all the time. Um, even so, like this, it's just not exciting me too much. Uh, It, and again, it really kind of tastes like a gin. There's some, it feels like there's some botanicals in there, lemon peel. But no, I, I, I'm guessing just apple brandy and chestnut aging. Uh, I'm going to write some preliminary scores on here. Yeah, this is, let me try this one more time. It's not, it's not bad, bad, but it's just, I, I'm puzzled. Mm. We'll come back to it. In the meantime, hopefully that doesn't wreck my palate. I'm pretty sure the Mar is going to wreck my palate, just smelling this stuff. Oh my god. Okay. Um, but before then, we have a Calvados. This is from Eric Bordelais. Uh, I have it actually. So Bordelais... <clears throat> is one of the coolest cider producers in France. Um, really kind of picked up on the super natty biodynamic movement uh, happening in wine, brought that over to cider. Uh, he's now distilling his own Calvados as well. Now this, this stuff is not his own uh, distillate. He's, he's basically being an independent bottler for this. Uh, I'm gonna read the notes. This is from one of Eric's mentors, apparently, uh, Patrice Delaunay. Uh, distilled in 1976, aged so 46 years old. Uh, bottled at cast strength, 44% uh, ABV with no filtration or add additives. Yada, yada, yada. Um, I will put more information down below if it is relevant. All right, so let's, uh, let's dig into this Al almost 50-year-old Calvados. These spirits are being tough on me today. Okay, so a lot of French oak. A lot of French oak. I am getting um, enormous amounts of, of uh, fig prune. Um, there's a lot of just like kind of musty wood happening. So like, uh, but like dry musty wood. So, so think less like damp attic and more like... Um, you know, like attic on a on a kind of a fall day. Like maybe there's some some leaves and stuff blowing into it from the open windows. Yeah, like old woody attic with some leaves blowing around. But behind all that wood is you know the apple. Actually, we've got three apple brandies here in a row. Uh, I didn't intend for that to happen. That's just I just lined them by, by, more or less by proof. Did I remember to add water? Hold up, I'm gonna add water to the Capriolas. Come back to that. Sorry, I was saying, behind the enormous amount of wood, of French oak on this, I am getting apple. I am getting specifically apple cheese. I've talked about apple cheese before. It's a, it's a Lithuanian thing. Boil down uh, a bunch of apples in a pan until you get a kind, and, and until you get a kind of toffee that's basically apple cheese. I find it a lot in Speyside uh, single malts, and man, is it in play here. White pepper. Uh, some minerality, a little bit of um, sandstone in there, like sandstone pebbles. And what is that? Um, 
something that reminds me actually of like old old Pinot Noir or something, old Burgundy. Um, maybe it's like the a, a, a kind of a dried fruit sort of note. Not not really the um, the classic mushroomy forest floor thing, but it's really almost like a dried, funky cherry thing intermixed with the enormous amounts of oak and the apple cheese. Yeah, I like this. It's I'm into this. It's um it's clearly got some age on it. Let's let's see what happens on the palate. Wait a second. Ha, huh, I was curious. Okay, so uh, one thing I should note about this, I'll talk about the, the what, I'll talk about the, the palette in a second, is uh, this is not marked as a um, uh, uh, paydage. It, is, it isn't uh, from the, the prestigious place in Calvados where you have to pot distill. This is just a Calvados. And um, that means it is, it is calm distilled. There's a couple of pot distillers in, in the wider Cognac re, uh, Calvados region, but for the most part, you're seeing short, classic column distillation. And that's what I'm getting, you know, on the palate here. Oh, that's nice. Um, on the palate, this behaves a lot like some kind of middle-aged, calm-distilled Armagnacs that I've had. Um, which made me think, well, hold on a second, this doesn't taste pop. That's where my mind went. That's where I wanted to check. Um, so I'm actually, so I, I would like the nose. I am, I am enjoying the palate more than I am enjoying the nose. It doesn't, the wood is absolutely present on this, and it brings a nice kind of like Irish breakfast tea meets, you know, like, like musty wood kind of finish um but on the palate it's 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 actually quite fresh yeah apple cheese um there's actually a little bit of cider vinegar on this a little bit of sour happening uh Lemon, but I don't want to say lemon. What is that? Um, almost like a toasted lemon peel thing, or at least I can't nail it down more than that. There's, there's, a, there's a bright kind of acidic character to this. Um, beyond that, you're getting certainly some apple, apple cheese. Uh, lots, of, lots of oaky flavors, the figs, the prunes. That kind of funky, you know, dried sour cherry note. I think a lot of people are going to give this a first look because it's going to be reasonably priced. I don't think this is going to be super expensive, especially not for a spirit that is, you know, pushing 50 years old. Um, but uh, sort of, stand, but by the way, standard basic Calvados is even at that age, don't get too expensive. So um, keep an eye, an eye on it for them. I think the reason to buy this beyond just the age statement is the fact that it's delicious. It's very um, sessionable, as the beer folks would say. Uh, all right, I'm going to come back to that in a second. I'm not going to give this too much water. Two, three, four, five, six. 44%, right? Yeah, 44%. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, what did I score this? I scored this now. Come back to that. This is one uh, I I have been smelling this for this entire tasting session. This is a Mar, so it is a French Pomus brandy, and um, it is a Mar Mar de Bourgogne, so a, a Mar from Burgundy. Um, 1969 Domaine Testut or Testu, I'm not sure. Uh, 45 years old. 
um, and bottled at 44.5% alcohol. Now, I've done um, other Mars from Burgundy before on this channel. What makes this different is Testu is a Chablis producer. Uh, Chablis is this region uh, way, way up north, kind of northeast-ish of, of the rest of Burgundy. Um, and it is notable because you can only grow Chardonnay there. You can only make Chardonnay under the, uh, the Chablis um, designation. Now, there are a couple of little villages out there. Irancy is the big one where you can, well, you will, will see Pinot Noir being made. But uh, if it's got the Chablis designation on it, it's only Chardonnay. Uh, this in particular is from Chablis Grand Cru, uh, pom grape pomace. So it's got to be Chardonnay. And that's really exciting to me. Why is that exciting? Because when you have a Mar made from red, red wine grapes, right? You've already made wine from it, meaning if it's a red wine, uh, the juice is already macerated on those skins. It's already sucked a lot of life out of the pomace that you get before the distiller ever gets a hold of them. White grapes are pushed, are, are pressed off the pomace uh, basically immediately, as quickly as possible, so that there's no contact. So that pomace still has a lot of life left in it. Um, so I'm extremely excited to try this. Not, uh, because white wine, Chardonnay based, really, really old Mar. That sounds like a recipe for fun. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just. Oh, that is, that is a great nose. Man, this is, okay, this. Right off the bat, I can tell I'm not going to be able to do justice to this um, in the space of, you know, an hour-long uh, off-the-cuff video review on YouTube. There is a lot going on in this nose. I am getting, I'm certainly getting some, like, just grapiness, like funky, almost, you know, like rotting raisins, but nice kind of character. But in there... It was fun trying the Calva right before this because I am getting some apple notes on this. So again, like like think not apple cheese. It's more like it's more like just straight up dried apples that again are maybe starting to get a little funky, a little rotty, but nice. Yeah, I'm totally picking up like the the Chardonnay character in this. Maybe that I'm I'm just like mentally inserting that but the apple there's some there's some straight up like just fresh lemon juice happening in this oh man and then then there's all the the mar notes that i love the tobaccos the teas uh what tobaccos and teas i'm going to try to name some off perique for a start is in here Burley, some Virginias. Not really getting any, any grassiness, so maybe not Orientals. Teas, Russian Caravan is in, in, is in here. English breakfast tea. There's a lot of different teas and tobaccos going on in here. And the more I swirl it around, I know I'm, I'm supposed to just do you know, the, the Ralphie, you know, gentle swirl. No shaky shaky. I will shaky shaky if I want to. Thank you. Anyways, the more motion I give this, the more the nose is opening up for me. This is very, very good. I can tell you that without even trying it. This is extremely complex. Minerality, there's, there's some just like muddy, earthy, grungy, like, you know, like... Um, old forest with mushrooms after a rainstorm kind of stuff oh that's awesome um and plus just add in some did i mention just a lot of french oaky notes as, as well so dried cherry fig you know prune that's there too and black pepper lots of stuff wow okay here we go on the palette
absolutely phenomenal. Um, when Thomas Brandy is on point, it is very, very hard to beat. Like, there's just so much going on. And if you can get all of that in balance, and oh, and this, this one is nailing it. Like, it's just nailing that what I want from this style. Um, so again, all the tobaccos, all the teas. Um, let me try this again. I'm trying to get my trying to get my bearings with this. Oh, lemon and sour cherry plus dried cherry for days. Um, oh, <laughs> it's just fantastic. Uh, mud mushrooms rotting wood uh but nice um oh what is it like almost a uh there's a particular like sour sauce you get in um like cantonese food and i cannot remember what the name is but that sauce is in here uh um jesus apple again it's it's actually closer to apple cheese on this time um Fig, prune, normal uh, uh, French oak stuff. Some raisins, again. I feel bad for the ones coming up after this. This is this is very 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 good. Uh, unless this completely collapses with water, it is it is heading into the nineties. Really good. Okay, so I'm gonna add that a few drops of this. We'll see what happens. What an absolute monster. Okay, I'm not gonna go more than three drops. I'm afraid of. I, I don't want to lose what I the rest of what I got. All right, uh, moving on to the second uh, PM Spirits shilling session. This is Frappon. Uh, let me get my text sheet out. Now, Frappon is, has always been a house that is kind of more interesting in theory than what they're putting out. So they're uh, an independent cognac house, and they're a grower cognac. Every single bottle they sell, what is in that bottle, they grew it, they harvested it, they distilled it, they aged it. Um, that is... Uh, quite, it's quite special to see that on U.S. like normal U.S. shelves. But you know, I, I did a, a review of their um, their tasting set a little while ago. The what is act, what they're actually putting out doesn't necessarily reflect the potential of of that. It's forty percent. It's it's presented you know like a better version of what the big four in cognac were, you know are doing. The uh, but PM Spirits have now gotten a hold of the brand and. They've sunk their teeth into it, so now we're getting stuff like this. It's a single cast from 1994, 27 years old. Uh, let's see, it's a Grand Champagne. Everything uh, Frappon puts out is Grand Champagne. Um, Nodi Blanc, Charente Distillation. 47.3%. Um, 40, they're, uh, they're calling that full proof, the infamous kind of wiggly full proof. Just if there has to be something in between, like cast strength, barrel, you know, barrel proof, as some kind of like, like we did not touch this at all before bottling, and you know, just standard bottling, you know, standardized bottling strengths. And man, I don't want it to be full proof. It just, it just feels. Just call it strong cognac. It's just strong cognac. That's what it is. Uh, forty-seven point three percent, no additives, non-chill filtered, full proof. All right, I'm gonna see what I can get out of this now that my brain is full of mar. Ooh, okay, here we go. It's proper grand champagne cognac. Uh, power, but also at the same time, a lot of flowers coming through. I mean, 27 years old, 
this feels like it could keep going. Like it, it, it's, it's got a youthfulness to it. It doesn't feel tired in any way. All right, what am I getting? Uh, I am getting, well, um, some, actually some white raisins, amazingly. I don't know why I said amazing. That's, that's pretty normal. White raisin. Kind of French oak, but then lots of, um, lots of flowers. Kind of, I don't know how to describe cognac flowers. It's a very distinctive kind of thing that I've, I've only really gotten on cognac bottlings. It's a, it's a very, it's an almost perfumey kind of, kind of floral note. Black pepper, English breakfast tea. Um, dried cherry, figs, prunes. Just a really nice kind of uh, grapiness. Like there is, uh, actually, yeah, let's let's go. There's a, a Sauterne kind of character, like old Sauterne. Um, like an old bottle of, of you know, Chateau Giro or something from the 90s. There's a little bit of that, you know, grapey, funky, floral thing happening. Very nice, very just textbook cognac and textbook Grand Champagne. Like, that's what this smells like. It, it smells like they, they picked this as something to just represent what the house can do. And I think they kind of nailed it. Let's see what happens, or at least on the, on the nose. Let's see what happens on the palate. Same kind of story on the palate. Um, wow, the mouthfeel on this absolutely crushes. Just texture, 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 and the finish just stays for days. Um, so one part of this that's impressive is again, almost the, the textbook quality of this. This is something if I had a full bottle of this and I had a friend who was like, you know, teach me the ways of like proper cognac, this would be like up there, you know, as something I could, I could just hand to them and say, or pour for them and, and say, this is what cognac is supposed to be. This is what cognac is supposed to be. Um, a lot of wood on this. Like, I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of wood. I'm, I'm pulling splinters out of my teeth a little bit, but I'm enjoying it. Um, English breakfast tea, old kind of slightly musty wood, macadamia nuts, uh, dried cherry again, like sour dried cherry, touch of um, orange actually, more orange peel, um, figs, prunes, usual uh, French oaky stuff. Uh, and the flowers. The flowers are absolutely present on the palette. Just that really kind of nice, almost pre-war perfume kind of thing. Like some of the really old recipes. I mean, so, so, there's a lot of smaller, good smaller cognac houses that are just trying to chase after the big four. And if more of them would like take this direction, would kind of go, oh, wait a minute, the Americans want things bottled at slightly higher proof? Huh, how about that? They don't want sugar or, you know, like wood water mixed in with their spirit. Let's give it a try, not, you know, just putting stuff from the cask into the more or less into the bottle with minimal filtration. Um, if more of them were doing that, I think cognac would be taken a lot more seriously. This is this is quite excellent. Um, uh, 
it's the texture. It's the texture and the finish that are really impressive on this. Just the, the way that the, the woodiness kind of covers the mouth and holds in the mouth and my entire mouth, like this is going deep back into my throat. Um, get your mind out of gutter. Um, and it just kind of hangs there. This, you know, this nice kind of woodiness at the bottom, the fruit in the middle, and then up top, you know, uh, the flowers, all of it in harmony. Very impressive. Really nice pick by the, the PM, PM folks. Give this some water and we'll come back to it. It's, you know, I don't even have to shill when the products are decent. I mean, I really don't. All right, uh, last up, the strongest bottle here. Uh, this is a Kuchan from Len Cantata. Uh, and it is, um, this was a pick by the Armagnac.de uh, people. It's as if someone made an order for, through them. Huh, how about that? Um, Domain Kuchan 2006, uh, cast number T36. Uh, exclusive for Armagnac.de, 270 bottles. I don't know much about this, um, but I found it interesting because the last Kuchan I tried was a little bit f disappointing, basic, good, but not providing a whole lot of detail. So I'm curious as whether a stronger version will do a little bit more. Oh. It's fun to taste, to, to nose this at, right after trying a, a cognac. This is actually pretty young. So 2006, uh, can't be more than like 15, 16 years old. And it kind of shows there's a, there's a lot of fresh, as much as I've been talking about the freshness of the rest of these, I know there's a lot of freshness to this nose. Um, Almost some exotic wood kind of aromatics. Herbs, like um, basil comes to mind. Thyme. Uh, there's almost a, a rusty character to this, like some rusty pennies. A lot of standard French oak characteristics. Um, Assam tea, Darjeeling tea in there as well. Figs, prunes, a little dried orange. A little actually like dried lime as well. Subtle nuttiness, like almost an orjo kind of thing. It feels fresh and lively, and the spirit isn't, you know, astonishing. Like the, it's you know, nothing like the character on what, of what we're getting from the Mar, for example. It's not. It's just not that assertive, but it's, it's holding out. Uh, the the oak hasn't kind of taken over yet. It smells good. Let's see what happens on the palate. Not impressing quite as much on the palate as on the nose. Let me try this one more time. I mean, what I'm getting is it, just, just, you know, it, something, it tastes like a pretty good Armagnac, um, like middle-aged Armagnac, which is kind of what it is. I do like the rusty penny thing. Um, I do like the kind of orange and lime thing. Uh, that's pretty nice. A little bit of basil carrying through with the tea notes. Um, some nice woodiness. Most of what's happening is happening kind of at the front of my mouth, so I'm hoping maybe water will change that. Um, but yeah, the mouth length is okay. Not could be better, um, but it holds on. Uh, you know, after the, after the main event.
kind of confirms my, my previous impression of Kuchan, which is that it's it's fine. It's absolutely fine. I don't know if I would necessarily seek this one out, but perfectly capable of making very good Armagnac indeed. All right, I'm going to give this a couple squirts of water, and we'll come back to it. Two, three, five. And I'm going to get more than that. It's, I don't have much left in the glass, but eight. But it is 51 odd percent, so a little bit more. <clears throat> All right, let's go back through. Second verse, same as the first. All right, back to the uh, the Capriolas, the 1,000 1, trees. Water in a little bit of time brings out more of the apple notes. And along with the, the Fuji apples, I'm now getting a little bit of like Grammy, Granny Smith as well. Yeah, the flowers kind of step back a little bit. They're still very present. And the, the apples kind of step forward a little bit. Along with a little bit of minerality, a little bit of rock dust. Nice on the palette. Ooh. So, yeah, what I always hope happens when I add water to something, I don't do it just because I normally drink things with water. Sometimes I will drink things with water. But I'll, not all the time and not usually. Um, the reason I do it here is because I'm hoping the spirit will improve a little bit with the addition of water. I'm hoping it will not collapse with the addition of water. Here it improves, though, and especially with the texture. Like, this is really just, just coating my entire mouth with um, like green apple and a little bit of grass and um, a little bit, a little bit of like, like again rock dust. Mm. Yeah, that's very good. Um, it's not hitting the stratosphere for me, but I like this a lot and it is dangerously drinkable. Like you, this is something you, you pop on the table in the middle of a party of like, even including like normal people who, you know, are a little bit more casual about their spiritual drinking. There's a very good chance this is not surviving the night. It's, it's just yummy. Eighty-five points. Eighty-five points for the uh, Capriolas. Cap Capriolas. One thousand three uh, trees. Twenty nineteen. Um, I might even be being too stingy. Yeah, I'm gonna give this eighty-five plus. Eighty-five plus. Very good. Recommend it if you can get it at a, at a, at a decent price. Uh, moving on to the chestnut. This was probably my. Least favorite of this bunch going through, but let's see what happens with some water. Okay. Oh, this is so weird. Um, so with water, I mean, it still smells like a gin. It still smells like there's a lot of evergreen juniper stuff on here. But the apple starts to creep through. It's It's almost like... You know, what, what am I even saying here? Um, take some, like, maybe dried apple and then, like, you know, uh, uh, you know submerge it, um, marinate it in, in a good gin for a couple of hours, take it out. And this is kind of what, it, what the impression I'm getting. Very gin-dominant apple. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of what I'm getting. Mm. On the palate, no. It does not like water. 
on the palette. Uh, it it kind of thins out. It really actually just like. Hold on, let me try that one more time. Whoa. Okay, so now with water, this arrives. Uh, the apple is again more present. Um, kind of mixing in with the, the juniper and the trees and the, the lemon peel and the botanical senses and stuff. Um, but then, after a second, it's just mostly gone. And all that's left is some pepper and kind of ashiness. Yeah, it just kind of ghosts on me. It, it goes Patrick Swayze. <clears throat> mm -mm. Ooh. It's fine. I'm not super into it, you know, when, when I, you know, um, I drink it, I'm not super into it, but I'm kind of appreciating the, the apple Ginny thing. And then it's just kind of gone, and I got lots of kind of ash and pepper in my mouth. That's, that's what's happening. And it's, yeah, this is, um, you can still tell it's a quality effort. It feels like still well made, but, uh, yeah, absolutely not my favorite. I'm going to give this an 81 minus um, and uh, tell you to buy the thousand apples instead. This is just, it's, it's better. It's better without the chestnut. All right, let's move on. Back to the, uh, the Calva. 46 years old. Okay. Um, the Bordelais, the uh, sourced Calva. This, when I, coming back to this, this really reminds me more and more of, um, well, like the first Calvados video I did, there was like a really old, uh, just basic Calvados Appalachian uh, uh, column distilled um, Calva in there. And that's really the vibe on this. It's just a little bit of a better version of that. Yeah. Apple cheese. Lots of musty wood, kind of musty cellar, French oak, not a huge amount of, you know, not, really not any development with water, but that's okay, because it was good before, it smelled good before, and it still smells good now. I know I've said it before, but Old Calva is really kind of underrated as a category. Like the, the Americans, to the extent that they care about Calvados at all, are looking for, you know, um, the pot distilled stuff. The French are looking generally for younger stuff. If they want older stuff, they're going Cognac or Armagnac or something. Um, there's, there's some kind of very French focus on younger spirit when it comes to Calva. So this stuff kind of gets forgotten once, you know, reasonably priced 46-year-old spirit. But man, it's still hanging in there. All right, let's see what happens on the palate. Get out of here. Um, oh, really improves on the palate. Like... There is a just a line of like take some like the best apple juice and the best cherry juice you can think of, you know, and combine them together, and then like um, you know maybe they maybe you leave it up for a little bit too long, so they start to ferment a little bit. They get a little bit funky and floral, um, but there is this this bright apple sour apple cherry thing in the middle of this that wasn't re that was sort of present but it wasn't really assertive um before i added water but now it's it's just singing oh that's righteous 
So this was very crushable and enjoyable before. Water actually improves this. It brings it up a level. And now, like, I wish I had a full bottle of this just so I could crush it. Um, very impressive. Very, very much improved with water. Um, let me give you some more descriptors. I mean, it's not a, there's not a ton of tasting notes to throw at you. There's a lot of musty wood, the cherry, the French oaky things, the, the, the prune and, and fig and stuff, the pepper, the teas, um, like over stewed English breakfast tea, something like that. Um, but it's really the, the depth of character here and the crushability that impresses me. Um, yeah. Um, if the PM Spirits guys sent me these samples in the hopes that I would give them a, a good score and, uh, and uh, you know, do their work for them, I'm absolutely going to do that. 89 points for this. This is an 89-point Calva. Um, I mean, it's, it's just a basic Calva, right? It's column distilled. Nothing, nothing, um, nothing special about it. It does have the Bordelais seal of approval, but that's about it. But man, this this is this is really good. Eighty nine points. But I have a feeling it is not going to measure up with the monster in the next glass. We are back to the test suit. Nineteen sixty nine. Older and made from a crazier base distillate. All right, let's see what happens with this stuff with now that it has water. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's, it smelled incredibly dense and complex before, and it still smells incredibly dense and complex. Oh, God. I, I like most of what is here, honestly, but I... Unless the next two, like, really step up, I don't think anything is beating this. This test two is, is it, 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 there's just, there's just so much there. All right, on, on the palate. Not a whole lot of development, except there's almost a, how do I explain this? Take some IHOP strawberry syrup, boil it down into like a, like a sour concentrate. There's almost like something like that. There's, yeah, like, like sour strawberry or something in this now, along with all the tobacco and tea and other stuff that I mentioned before. Again, this is uh, this test suit. I don't think it's available in the U.S. right now, but you can get it on international markets. And um, yeah, good mar, good mar. Let me tell you something. If you take yourself to be a fan of great spirits, no matter what they 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 be, um, great Scotch, great great Armagnac, great cognac. Um, great mezcal, whatever it would be, you absolutely owe it to yourself to get a good bottle of Mar. Something at like punching at this level, um, because they're phenomenal. They're 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 just so so dense and characterful, and at the moment not that expensive for what they are. I'm just finishing this off. Um, yeah, wow. Uh, we are getting deep in the 90s with this one. I'm going to go 91 plus. 91 plus for the um, the, <laughs> the Testute 1969 Mar de Bronia. Very good. Very good indeed. 
highly recommend it if you can find it. Where are we? 55 minutes? Oof, okay. Let's see if we can wrap this up in under an hour. All right, moving on to the, uh, the Frocon 94. Hmm. That orange note I mentioned on the nose before has really kind of exploded a little bit. Do almost like um, like an orange herbal tea kind of thing. Oh man, okay. Yeah, on the whole, it's it's uh, uh, the aromatics have kind of gotten a little bit more. Um, a little bit more in the soprano range, if I can put it that way. Um, so the, the treble and the bass have been a hair bit suppressed. Not suppressed, like, like the, 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 the top stuff, the, the florals, the aromatic stuff has gotten a little bit louder, which I'm appreciating. But this, it just really smells like cognac, Grand Champagne. I'm, yeah. It's just a good pick. All right, let's see what happens on the palette. Surprisingly, it's the minerality that comes out with water. Um, there's like a, <laughs> it gets very sort of dra gravel driven. Um, but no, the flowers are mixed in there with it. I'm just really impressed by the way this behaves in the mouth. The finish just holds and holds and holds. Not a lot of changes with the with the notes I can give you, aside from just like there's more gravel and, and minerality happening. Maybe a hair bit more kind of a black pepper thing. Um, this is just a, a, it's just a good pick. Um, and more than that, it's a good representation of what Frappon and Cognac and Grand Champagne can do when it's kind of presented, if you'll, if the French will forgive me, in a, in a whiskey style, in a style that you know, Scotch drinkers and bourbon drinkers have come to expect. You know, just no, no, nothing added, nothing taken away, thrown into a bottle, go from there. Uh, what's putting this over the, the Calva for me? It's just that, that the way it behaves in the mouth. I really love the kind of um, uh, cherry, sour cherry thing this does, especially with the water. But you know, this just feels more kind of stately, regal. I don't even know, know if that makes sense. Anyways, I'm gonna give this a 90. I'm gonna give this a 90 out of 100. And if you got to pour something for someone that is just supposed to represent cognac to them, this would be a really good choice, actually. Uh, all right, moving on. I swear PM Spirits is not paying me. I swear, I just like their stuff. All right, moving on to the uh, the Kuchan. I was a little bit disappointed in this when I, when I tried it earlier. Let's see what, if it's uh, stepped up. Ooh, okay, there's like a cherry bubblegum thing happening now. It's kind of fun. Yeah, like almost a old candy party. There's some, um, like some sour patch in here now. Just a little, little gummy bears. I'm not joking. I'm, I'm absolutely smelling like, like kind of aromatic old school candy on these, or on this.
Yeah, like the, the, the herbaceousness has kind of like left the building. Most of what I'm getting now is old school candy. All right, let's see what happens in the palette. Better. Better. I think Kuchan might be one of those domains that actually might Okay, I'm I've had this is a, a sample of two, right? But if I'm gonna speculate, I think I like Kuchan better at a younger age. Um Yeah. The mouth length improves. This is now going for much further back in my mouth. Uh, the, some minerality is coming out. The the the, uh, the mouth feel is improved. There's a little bit better texture. I can't explain the nose smelling like candy, but the palate is very classical Armagnac with a little bit of um, a little bit of a like a like a uh, sour orange thing happening. Hmm. hard work these reviews uh good finish yeah the, the, maybe maybe like um it's not really sour orange it's, it's more like like orange herbal tea or something like that um good finish holds on for a while uh yeah what am i gonna, gonna give this i'm not gonna go crazy let's say 87 87 points for the uh, Armagnac.de, uh, Domain Kachan 2006. So, uh, what are your winners here? Well, uh, okay. So, in last place is the Capriolas uh, Chestnut. I was not a fan of this. Um, it really does not like water. So, if you have, if you have a bottle of this, um, drink it neat. Just drink. It doesn't even really taste like apple brandy at that point, but trust me, drink it neat. Um, uh, second up, the Capriolist 1000 Trees apple brandy, uh, unaged. Buy this instead of this, uh, 85 plus. Uh, what is next? Right, uh, third place, the Armagnac.de uh, pick, 87 points, pretty good. I, I like this actually more than the uh, the PM pick. So maybe I'm not a PM shill after all. Because this is the better Kuchan. Um, and then, what? Third place. Oh, the Bordelais pick. Bordelais uh, PM Spirits pick. It's good. It's, it's the, I mean, you're going to, it's going to get your attention because it's old and not, gonna, not super expensive, as I recall. It's not cheap. It's still over 100, but it's not 200 yet, I don't think. Um, but it is worth your attention because it's very, very crushable. And, oh, by the way, it swims really well. Oh, I love that apple-y ch sour cherry thing. Oh, it's good. Yeah, 89 points. 90 points for the Frappon pick, 94. Just, I mean, it, I mean, this gets where, where it is by just being a really, really good classical cognac. I mean, it is, if, uh, you know, it, it's just textbook in, in the best possible way. This is what I imagine cognac should taste like if you just, you know, took the took the the crutches and the uh, the the chains and the limitations off of it. Ninety points, but uh, it is not the winner today because the winner is the test two of Mar de Bourgogne at uh, ninety one plus. Um, yeah, Mar. Uh, I need to review more Mars. The I, I will say the reason I have some Mars sitting around. 
the reason I don't review them very often is because they're hard. Like, they require... Uh, I can review scotches with my eyes closed at this point. Like, I've just had them a lot, and I, I'm used to those, those flavors. Mar just always takes a lot of intellectual efforts, and I'm lazy. But, yeah, i got to review some more Mars. Well, Pomace Brandies in general, I should say. All right, thanks for watching uh, through this uh, hour and five-minute video. See you later, and cheers.